Okay, got it sorted out. Hi, welcome back to my channel, a netty nook, I guess. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. Um, I do mostly like booktube videos, although I am trying to do a lot of different kinds of things. You might have noticed I have a music playlist thing going on. Um, those tend to be pretty long, so I haven't been making those, but um, I hope that I can get back to that. Today's video is pretty exciting, uh, it's my singlet book haul I guess, but I want to start this video with a bit of a disclaimer, I am not someone that usually buys books, I try not to buy books at all and I don't believe in really buying books because you we have a perfectly usable library. I mean buying books and having them shipped, especially from overseas, it's part of that whole consumer chain and I personally do not want to partake in that kind of a industry. Uh, it's not a very sustainable kind of habit in, from my point of view. Plus the fact that most of us don't really read books more than like once or twice. I don't see the benefit of really keeping hard copies of books. But today's case is really exceptional because these are all local bookstores. I wanted to support the local bookstores th during this period of time. A lot of them actually do have some titles available in ebooks and I think that's such a great um, direction forward. So the good news is if you're from abroad, you're not from Singapore, you're very welcome to to buy and download the ebooks from their bookstores. Um, definitely I'll be linking the three bookstores that I got my books from in the description box below, so please check them out. So without further ado, and that disclaimer put aside, I'm gonna start this video. The first so-called mini haul I'm gonna go through is the two books that I bought from Epigram books. Um, so the first book is this one, Sufyan Hakim, called The Minorities. But I decided to finally like get it because I really want to read more singlet, especially by minority voices. Um, as you might know from previous videos, or maybe if you're new here, I tend to read a lot of non-fiction and that kind of writing can get really detached sometimes because it's very factual, very inf informative. Um, but um, personally, I'm trying to push myself to read more fiction as a way of like understanding and of relating because I know that you can't capture the whole human experience just through non-fiction. The different characters in this novel, I guess you can see the illustration. There are many different layers to their identity. You know, maybe their nationality, their background, their jobs, their occupation, their history. I think there's a very intentional effort to make these characters have um, have a bit more of a complex identity of at least far beyond what we can commonly understand as very strict racial or social economical um, boundaries of identity. So this author was uh, actually wrote the book Harris Bin Potter as well, which is a parody of Harry Potter, but based in a Singaporean context. And I've heard that that book was really great. So I'm kind of excited to see how this one plays out. The next book that I have from Epigram is, I think, a pretty popular book now, I guess. Um, it's the Eating Chili Crab in the Anthropocene, Environmental Perspectives on Life in Singapore, edited by Matthew Schneider Mason. The editor is actually a professor at Yonius College, um, which is the place I recently graduated from. So I did hear about this book in the making. I was already kind of very eager to get the book. Seems like a lot of Singaporean uh, bookstagrammers are into this book and that's really good to hear because like uh, in my other video where I talked about me reading This Changes Everything by Naomi Klein, um, that really ignited a passion in me to kind of figure out more climate change perspectives in my local context which is in Singapore and, th and that is exactly when this book came out so I thought like wow this is like this is perfect. I'm really excited to see the essays. From what I know, they're all really great writers and this is really a timely publication. And moving on, I actually got some books from Ethos, uh, Ethos Bookstore. So the next book I have it on ebook. It's this book called Dream Stories by Clara Chow. It's actually a collection of 
interviews and stories that are sort of tied to the interviews and I think that's really such an interesting way to write a collection of stories as you can see here they, they actually interviewed um, people who are architects as well so I love this kind of a mixed media kind of book the next book is really pretty it's the this is how you walk on the moon by Patricia Karnugan Samuel Caleb V. Wong Wen Poo. This is how you walk on the moon as a practical field guide to the vagaries of our contemporary universe. A handbook for navigating the sublime, the subjective, and the inexplicable. It's described as an anthology of anti realist fiction. I think that's so cool. I really don't read sci fi or fantasy. So this is completely out of my comfort zone. I think that what local bookstores do really well is that they can bring such amazing short stories together. Um, the cover is really amazing and I think the moment I saw the description I was so sold on it and yeah if I'm not wrong it wasn't available as an ebook so that was kind of like the sad part. The last book that I got from Ethos actually has a pretty funny story. No Other City, the Ethos Anthology of Urban Poetry and it's a collection of short stories that are inspired by Singapore's urban landscape once again. And I think this is a very constant motif in local poetry because it is a landscape that has evolved very rapidly and holds a lot of meaning for, for our society. The funny story is that I actually gifted my own annotated copy and I forgot that I did. So I bought this copy to give that this like to give this to that person. But yeah, so I forgot, so now this copy is mine. <laughs> so I bought the book first for a module that I was doing. But um, I think reading it, I started to love it more than just an assigned text because I felt that the collection of stories here was so amazing. Okay, the thing that's unique about this collection is that it brings together the perspectives of, the perspectives of 64 poets whose collective work spans several gener generations. So what you get are like poems written by people who might have been there during Singapore's independence years, as well as young poets today who write about living in Singapore. To see them interacting this way was really heartening and I really enjoyed it. So I really do a lot of research and I really think a lot about it before I buy any sort of like poetry collection because it might be true that you might enjoy one or two poems, but the rest are really strange or you might not vibe with them and I think the creation of poems put together is really a difficult job in itself. Yeah. So the last bookstore that I got my books from, Books Actually. So Books Actually is one of my favourite bookstores. They have their own in-store like publishing brand which is called the Math Paper Press. So a lot of the books that you see in that bookstore is published in-house. And I think that's amazing because I think they're one of the few places, like the earlier places, that really gave a platform to a lot of local authors and I respect that a lot. Um, I got a total of three books from their bookstore and the first one is this, Homeless, The Untold Story of a Mother's Struggle in Crazy Rich Singapore, Liana Damira. I found this book on Bookstagram actually, so thanks y'all. This is a autobiography of a woman who was homeless in Singapore. Such stories in Singapore tend to get untold because of such overarching narratives of our success and our society. I think if you're an international viewer, you might know Crazy Rich Asians, the film. There was a lot of discussion about it in Singapore because it really depicted a very one-sided view of the crazy rich elite people in Singapore and does not represent the society at all. Um, please take note that that's a completely fictional and exaggerated version of a few people who live in Singapore and not the society in general. Singapore is a serious inequality issue and honestly I'm really glad that voices and stories like this are being published so I'm very very eager to read this book. Just wanted to add this in because I forgot to mention it in the video just now. The author of Homeless, Liani Damira, is actually running as a candidate in the Red United 
Red Dot United Party in the Jurong GRC in the upcoming general elections and this is such amazing news because um, really she really has experienced the kind of difficulties that she wants to represent at the politics level and I think that's really so amazing. Another thing I want to mention is that she herself has re received so much like racial discrimination. One note I want to make is that in Singapore there is a huge preference for Chinese people, not just Chinese speaking but also appearance wise. So a lot of Malay Muslim women have have been asked to take off the hijab or asked to sort of um, conform to certain standards which shouldn't be even there, shouldn't even be there in the first place. So I wanted to voice that out and I think that's kind of ridiculous that they are still experiencing such such like standards today in Singapore when they should be recognised for their merits worth. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out because I think it's pretty important. Cool. The next book that I have is this book that I've been thinking of getting for so long. Um, this book is called Growing Up But I'm One. Um, and this is published by Aware, but um, it's sold by I think different bookstores, but I got it from Books Actually. I have always wanted to read more about the Malay Muslim perspective in Singapore. Um, I guess if you don't know, um, my family is kind of like from Indonesia but we moved to Singapore and I find myself kind of like at odd ends because a lot of the food and cultural icons I guess I would associate a bit more with Indonesia um, but growing up Chinese in Singapore that was a very dissonant experience for me and why I decided to get hard copy as well is because I wanted to share it with my mom and also with other people who might be interested in reading this um, there is an ebook available as well but I decided to get the hard copy for that reason my mom has started reading it and she seems to be really um, immersed in it so I'm really glad well I didn't explain what the book was about but it's really about a collection of short stories from Malay Muslim women in Singapore um, this is called Air Conditioned Nation Revisited Essays on Singapore Politics by Cherian George I just feel like Singapore politics is so crazy and wild to think about and I just want to read as much as I can to form my own opinion on it I've read Living With Myth Myths before and it was alright, it was not bad but I felt that the, perpe the perspectives were a little bit too neutral um, people were not, the academics and the educators were not really um, questioning the narratives as I thought they might be. That book was created in part of a series of lectures delivered for a different purpose altogether and not to challenge the status quo. Um, this is a book that, have, that has been cited and shared by many people um, on in Singapore, at least many people that I follow that I find to be legitimate political voices in Singapore. Look at those tiny little aircons. <laughs> the reason why I decided to get hard copy as well is because I thought that this was going to be a book that I was going to refer back again and again and again. These books actually gave me such cute freebies um, because I ordered from them and oh my god, it's so cute. They even hand stitched a notebook. It's like a blank notebook but hand stitch that's so cute i just want to re-emphasize that this is totally not a normal occurrence so please don't expect more book hauls in the future um maybe i'll do like one every year because that's how little books i buy a year but this is clearly an exception because of the whole atmosphere of supporting local and about education and learning more about Singapore, especially due to the upcoming general elections that kind of encouraged me to finally buy the books that I've been wanting for such a long time. Thanks for joining me on this video. I hope to see you soon in other videos. I don't know whether I should add background music or not. Let me know in the comments if you prefer background music or you don't prefer background music. And um, cool, um, any other additional information I'll add in the description box below, um, such as links to the local bookstores, maybe some more resources if you're Singaporean, some resources for you to learn more about the general elections coming up, and um, 
yeah stay cool oh yeah follow my bookstagram at a netty nook um please like comment subscribe i guess and i don't know how to sound more exciting but yeah that's all thanks for joining me and um this is the ending credit cool